Welcome tonight to another alumni live Q&A. We're so glad you're here with us and um, we're really looking forward to sharing with you um, the story and the lives of these two beautiful um, 2019 alumni. Um, before we begin, I guess I should say, I am Abby Sharbach. I'm the mentor coordinator for Given. And just like last night, I am stepping in for Rachel, our executive director, who is expecting her third baby uh, any minute. So please keep her in your prayers. And um, actually, as we open in prayer, we'll just quickly add her to our intentions for tonight. So I would like to open in prayer, and then we'll get right into the meat of this interview. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy God, we thank you for being with us and giving us so many gifts. We thank you for your presence in our hearts and our lives and the ways in which you direct us. We thank you for the witness of Cassandra and Kara and the other women that we've spoken to this week and all the women who have participated in the Given Forum, our speakers, our leaders and mentors. We just praise you for the diversity and beauty of your people. And we thank you for calling us all here together to this community and blessing us with so many gifts. I pray that you would anoint our conversation tonight, that you would be present here with us, and that you would touch the hearts of those who are listening, that there would be mutual encouragement and support by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is we are going to spend a little bit of time talking about Cassandra and Kara's experience at the Given Forum in 2019, and then we will transition to a little bit of conversation about Dr. Maima Albeda's uh, keynote on responding to the gifts that you've been given, and um, just a beautiful keynote, and I've had the privilege of speaking to Dr. Maima a number of times because she's here in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins, and her faith is just so inspiring and so genuine. So anyway, so we hopefully will have a little bit of time to talk about that. What I want to say for all of you who are tuning in tonight is to put your comments. We have people standing by to answer your questions and to talk with you, so put your comments below the video, and um, we'd be happy to. Cassandra and Kara are ready to answer your questions when they get a chance. So um, Kara, I'm going to start with you. Kara Dixon is a 2019 alum. She is a TV reporter, so actually she is ready to go with this. She knows all about this. And she is in Norfolk, Virginia right now. Um, and uh, just really excited to hear from you, Kara, how you got to the Given Forum and what you took from it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk about my experience at Given and how I got there. So before I, I got to Given, I had heard about um, the conference, listening to a podcast that fall. And listening to it, it was kind of like the answer to my prayers over like a year and a half. So I was, you know, praying to God, like, you know, what's my purpose? What can I do with these gifts that you've given me? Because I've, I have a few, I have a lot of interest. And so I was like, you know, I, I have leadership qualities. I like am Catholic. I'm, I try to be faithful. I have all these things that I want to offer, but I don't really know, you know, how to use them for your church. And so I remember that I, was randomly listening to this podcast and they had um, one of the ladies from Given on there. And I was like, wow, I, I think I need to go to that. <laughs> and so I applied to it and I got in. I was so excited that I got into that. And, um, you know, I, I went up last June to, to Washington, D.C. I drove up and it's crazy because the night before I woke up with like excruciating neck pain and so my whole given experience i was in a lot of physical pain like we i couldn't really sleep that night i was getting taped up by the religious sisters there and um you know i, I was in pain this whole time but you know what kept me going was listening to all these speakers there talk about these things that i had prayed for like the the leadership qualities like the temperament um that was like very insightful for me learning you know how i kind of like act as a person the professional development um you know learning more about having a, a good prayer life and it it was crazy just like hearing talk after talk of everything that i had you know taken to prayer and um it, it was it was just a, a great experience for me to also just see so many you know 
different women living out their faith and living out their vocations. And one of the things, you know, I'm I'm a single woman and I was like afraid that I was going to go there and, you know, uh, get a vocation that, or hear back from a vocation like that. I like, wasn't sure that I want to do, but being at Gibbon (laughs) was, um, I was able to see, you know, so many different women living out their vocations. And I, I left feeling that, you know, whatever it is, I'm going to be joyful because, you know, that's what God made me for. So that was one of the, um, the highlights of being at Gibbon. And, um, it, it, it was just like a great experience. And so I was in the secular, um, professional track. So I, I came up with the idea to do this thing called, um, not called, but like I, I, my plan was to have different stories highlighting the beauty of, you know, our world. So I'm a TV reporter and a lot of time I see um, the negative parts of life, like death and everything like that. And what I wanted to do was have a plan that I could highlight, um, you know, the, the beauty of life, the, the things that we don't really, you know, see all the time on the, on times on the news. And so that was my plan. I, I knew that as soon as I like applied that I was going to do this, I'm still working on it. So <laughs> COVID's kind of cut it back, <laughs> but awesome. that was my, yeah, that was my plan. And it was, it was really great, you know, talking with the group there, you know, I, I had a lot of other people in my group that were in the secular path. They would give me feedback, everything like that. Um, we had like our, our mentors, we had, um, like a religious sister who was one, um, another one that had worked in like the secular professional field. So it was cool, you know, seeing like both sides, like what they think I should do. And that was really helpful. Also hearing from the other, the women in my group, that was awesome. And then after, um, you know, just being able to have sister Mary Monica, who was assigned as my mentor, just being able to talk to her like once a month and, and calling her on the phone. And she would like encourage me and, and talk me through things about like what she would, think would be like a a good plan and little, you know, steps and stuff that I was taking. So, you know, going to Gibbon, it, it really was a gift and it really was a blessing at that time in my life where I was trying to figure out, you know, what, what I was supposed to do. Um, you know, since going to Gibbon, it's really been about growth for me, just being able to, to find out who I was. Like a, a lot of, at Gibbon, we heard a lot about, you know, be who God made you to be. And it was just kind of accepting like my flaws and my strengths and my talents and weaknesses and all of that. And it's just been for me in this past year, just, you know, learning to love me the way that God loves me and just Mm -hmm. offering what I have right now. And so, you know, doing that, I I think I, I've been able to do better work at my job. Um, I've, you know, kind of opened myself up to doing what God wants me to do. I've been on like three podcasts this year now just because of like, I'm like, you know, I'll do what you need me to do, even though, you know, I'm nervous about talking on podcasts and doing all these other things, <laughs> but it, <laughs> when I'm here talking now, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, been like a, a great journey and just realizing that, you know, who we are, we, we're the gift to other people and just being able to offer what you all have. And I really learned that at Gibbon and, and it was awesome. And all the women that were there were awesome and everyone's doing just great things. And I, re- I really loved it. And yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. Yeah. All the women are super inspiring, aren't they? I mean, and there's yeah. just so many different calls, you know, mm-hmm. it helps you to see so clearly that there isn't just one way to be a faithful Catholic woman. Yeah. And I, and I think before I went, I was really just, you know, like, you know, I have to either, you know, be a religious or, you know, work for the church or something like that. But, you know, going there, seeing so many different women in, in different careers, like they had lawyers talking and people that like uh, entrepreneurs and everything like that. It was, it, it really helped, you know, understand that, you know, God calls us all to do different things and no person has, you know, a a set like vocation and everything like that. Like there are different ways to get to heaven and, and use, and use the gifts that he's given to us. So that was. Yeah. And I think, I don't know how many of the keynotes from discover the gift you've been able to listen to, but I am imagining this theme was also a big thread through the forum is just what you're talking about, like accepting yourself and seeing these are the gifts that God has given me to use for his glory and for the betterment of the world, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I know when, when I was there, like you said, or like I said, I was having that, you know, that neck pain, that physical pain. Oh, right. Yeah. I I really wasn't, um, during that time, I felt like I wasn't really hearing from God that much. And I was just like in a bad place emotionally and spiritually. 
And I went to confession and I remember I was crying in confession and I was telling the priest that and the priest started crying. And it was like in that moment that I was just like, God really does care about you. And he cares, you know, he, he cares that you're hurting and he wants you to, you know, to accept like who you are and all these things. So it was like, I think it was about the second or third day that I was there that that happened. And like, after that, everything kind of just, you know, ever since then, it's been like on an upward path. So that's yeah, amazing. That gives me go- that gives me goosebumps yeah. actually. How beautiful cuz God does care about our pain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. it was crazy. I I've, I've never been to confession and see and like have seen a priest cry and like I saw the tear on the side. I was like it hit me. <laughs> Praise God. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, it was awesome and you know when we left um I was talking to the the sister that was there and I was trying to tell her that I was so thankful about everything. And that's the second time in my life that I've ever been speechless. I couldn't form the words to thank her for being there and like having this and, and, you know, having this great event. And I was crying and she's like, it's okay. You're loved. Like you're beautiful. And I was like, (laughs) yeah, that's, that's how much it meant to me that I wasn't able to form into words how amazing women was in my life. So oh, that's so amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you so much for sharing that, Kara. That's really a beautiful story. Thank you. Um, Cassandra, do you want to go ahead and take the floor and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to Given and what some of the main takeaways for you were for um, your experience there? So Cassandra Ortiz Lopez is joining us from Long Beach, California. And um, she is in school to be a lawyer, pre-law program right now. Is that right, Cassandra? And um, she said that she also works for the mouse, which I'm sure is a California way of saying that, right? Um, (laughs) Yes. So she works uh, when it's not coronavirus, she works for Disneyland, right? Or is it Disney World in California? (laughs) Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, so Cassandra, we can't wait to hear from you. Go ahead. Yeah. So thank you everybody for being here and um, being so open to hearing our stories. Um, I'm very blessed to be here. Given for me was something that I like to tell Miss Rachel. It was a Pentecost experience. I came to Given um, in a different way. I wasn't aware of Given until after the application had closed. And um, the Carmelite sisters had sent me the link, believing that the applications were still open. And when I applied, it said that the applications had closed. And I called and I was like, I, I didn't know, but there was this deep yearning that the Lord had given to me. Um, because prior to given a year before, exactly within the same week, um, I had gotten invited to a United Nations Leadership Summit. During this time, I learned a lot, I heard a lot, and my heart was broken. Um, I, during this experience, I was telling God, I was like, my heart hurts with you to know that all of these painful and hurtful things are going around in the world, and everybody is concerned about who can scream the loudest, who can voice a certain issue, and it's like everything is important. We're all brothers and sisters, and I was like, God, I'm sorry, but I can't do international relations anymore. I'm leaving politics and I'm going for environmental science. I'm going for the sciences. And um, when I was given the gift of going to Given, um, it was such a grace because God knew that my heart needed mending and needed healing. And he knew that that Given was the place that I would find that. When I got there, before I got there, I had a marvelous experience with our Blessed Lady um, and just visualizing her mantle and me being carried by St. Joseph and me being gazed upon by Jesus. That to me was like, okay, Lord, wherever you're taking me, let's go. And um, when I got there, my intention was, Lord, I want this to be the enlightening. I want this to be a transfiguration, a Pentecost moment. Like, show me where the areas of my life that I am hurting and show me how am I supposed to serve you and your people. And that was everything. Um, During Given, I went to Mass. I went to Adoration. And at first, I was on the undecided track. (laughs) Um, I 
was pursuing religious, uh, like a religious vocation. And I was like, Lord, I just want to serve you. I am so in love with you. I want to just smile to you and give you everything that I have, everything. Because when I speak of you, it's like, I can't stop speaking. And it's the greatest gift of them all. Um, and the Lord was like, yes. And I want you to know that I love you. And in this process, I was like, Lord, but I'm so broken. How can you use somebody like me? You know, and there was a, um, a keynote that talked about Peter, St. Peter, and how God is calling him out of the boat. And me and St. Peter are really close because <laughs> he's my patron saint um, for my confirmation. And I, I was like, St. Peter, like, please, my dear friend, pray for me, for the Lord is calling and I do not want to gaze away from him. You know, allow my heart to be fully open to him. And, um, and the Lord was just like, I have a mission for you. And I was like, um, there's a lot of other people who are very well spoken and who have all these amazing careers and who can do it, Lord. And God was calling me back to politics. Um, there was a lovely speaker that her name was Anna Helpine. Um, and she is the founder of the World Youth Alliance. And she spoke on the United Nations. And I was like, okay, Lord, I am letting down my walls and I'm letting you speak to my heart. Um, and that was it. That was the Pentecost moment. At that moment, I realized that the Lord had called me to serve him, to be his voice. And it wasn't a normal voice about, you know, being Democrat or Republican. It was about his love. It was transmitting that light and being a child of light and really living out that calling that he has given us. Um, and that may seem a little weird, particularly in law where everything is kind of like black and white. But in reality, God's love is with different colors. You know, he loves seeing you and he wants the best for you. I was so taken by that moment. Um, and one particular moment during Given, um, we were celebrating Mass, and right as Mass was finishing, um, I felt called to a little, a little hall in the crypt uh, where there's an image of our Blessed Mother, um, and it's our Blessed Mother um, of Good Peace and Good Voyage. And I was I was a little nervous because I was like, Lord, where are you taking me? Where am I going? Um, and I prayed as a good Catholic woman, I prayed and I knelt down and I was like, mother, like, please guide me towards your son. Like, let me not lose my way, please. Particularly with, you know, everything that's going around the world and what am I called to do? And um, I wanted to leave after praying and mom was like, no, please come back. There's something I must tell you. And in this moment, I heard Our Lady speak to me, telling me not to be afraid because where the Lord was sending me, she was always going to protect me. And even though it was going to be difficult, I was not alone for she was always going to be with me. And that to me was just like, okay, let, let's do it. So I came back home after given and I was like, okay, I'm letting go environmental science and I'm going to go and do pre-law and thanks be to God, um, Disney offered the opportunity to pay for my studies um, and fully covering everything from my bachelor's and my master's and the Lord was just, he was opening doors and windows and everything, making sure that I was going to live out his calling. And even though life can, you know, be unpredictable like during these times, the Lord knows. The Lord knows, and in these moments, he's pruning. He's allowing us to become good wine, and that is something that I'm really excited about because given was that Pentecostal experience, and I am so, so grateful for it. Yeah, that is so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. The two of you are amazing. What a privilege to sit here with you and discuss this, how God worked in your lives. That's really, really beautiful. Cassandra, you um, talked about this healing that God did in your, in your heart. Sounds like he just really drew you close through that experience, through that 
I mean, Given isn't just a conference, you know, and I think that CARE also um, highlighted this, that there is this real, the spiritual, we, is not divorced from all the practical things that you're learning there about temperament or leadership style, but our spiritual life informs all of that. And the fact that you can go to a conference like that and go to mass and go to adoration and have these opportunities to um, spend time with the blessed mother and hear her voice telling you not to be afraid. I'm just, that's really, really beautiful. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Now, sign me up for a Pentecost moment. I want it to. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, guys. So let's move to talking about Dr. Mima's talk. Um, Cassandra, do you want to start us off this time? And do you have anything you want to share about Dr. Mima's talk, particularly that struck you or impacted you when you listened to it? Yes. Um, there was something in particular that she shared with us um, about the vocation of a thinker is to seek truth. Mm -hmm. and um what is true you know god is true and i being studying pre-law um i make it a habit of mine to always like be open to my faith whether it be in my discussion boards whether it be in an assignment because the lord is asking me to stir and move in those places where he is not well accepted in those places where i am allowed to touch somebody's life and accompanying them, uh, just like our keynote speaker shared with us, like accompanying everybody we encounter um, because they themselves are the gift that the Lord has given to us in that particular moment where God is allowing the Holy Spirit to transmit through you and be able to, you know, create something even more extraordinary than we could ever imagine. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, and so you share with Dr. Maima those two things, right? The seeking of truth and also accompaniment. Um, yeah, that's great. How about you, Kara? Did you want to share something about the talk? Yeah, I just, I, I, it was crazy to me that it seemed like almost everything she was saying, I felt like I related to it. Like, you know, in regards to the, the pain she's having, you know, the woman pains, I've, I've dealt with that too, how she offers it up. Um, how she was saying, like, she felt like she was spoiled by God sometimes. So when she wanted to get what she wanted, she was upset. I felt like I, I understood that. And it was just, it was crazy just, you know, hearing how all she was saying. And I was just like, everything, I was like, I relate to that. I relate to that. I relate to that. And what stuck out to me was like, I feel like a lot of us have more similar stories than we, you know, sometimes speak about and that, you know, people, we all are going through things like that. And it's just beautiful that, we can share these stories and, you know, understand what people are going through that, you know, a lot of us are actually, you know, dealing with these things that we think only we're going through and we can sometimes close ourselves off to, you know, talking about them and just, um, you know, trying to heal from, you know, what, what we do go through. But to me, it was just, you know, I was just sitting there like, wow, like I relate to this so much. And, it, you know, I'm sure there were a lot of other women out there just hearing her story and, and taking comfort and knowing that, you know, people do understand what, what she was going through. So that was, that was the biggest thing to me, just being able to relate to that and, and, and hearing what, her story. So. Yeah, that's beautiful too. I think you're right. And hearing somebody else's spiritual journey and when it resonates with your own, you're like, okay, okay, maybe I'm not on the wrong path, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you guys, I don't know, this is kind of off the cuff here, but I thought it was so surprising that Dr. Maima brought out her painting. Like this, this, here she is, a wonderful physician, a rheumatologist, so brilliant and so deep in her devotion to the Lord. And all of a sudden she's like, and I'm a painter, <laughs> right? Do you guys have any hidden gifts that you have discovered uh, that you would, what would you say like, oh, you wouldn't expect that I have this gift, but I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but. <laughs> well, no. Trying to think. Yeah. Do you have one, Cassandra? Oh, Kara has one. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do a lot of, um, I've been into photography, like during quarantine and everything, but I kind of do that for my job. So I don't know if that would, that would count, but. Well, usually you're in front of the camera. So I think if you're behind it, that it does count. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am behind the camera. I do both. So do I both. do both. Okay. Camera. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if that would actually count, but. But it's different because it's probably going back to that finding beauty, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's unexpected, right? Yeah. Um, how about you, Cassandra? Do you have any unexpected gifts like that? 
for me, it is also painting. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I related so a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's something for me, it was, I did it, I kind of just volunteering for like second grade uh, student teacher assistant. And I drew big dinosaurs, like life-size dinosaurs. And I was like, Lord, how can I do this? Like, I have no training whatsoever. And um, I feel like I understand God better when I paint. Um, and in many different ways as well, or just being still and really just allowing God to shine his light on us. Um, when it comes to painting, I am, I put, you know, Lauren Daigle, um, for King and Country, and I am like, Lord, just speak, like, let it be you, um, and just really show me, allow me to discover a place that I haven't gone to. Um, I believe that there was a, uh, a lovely podcast as well, uh, for abiding together with, within regards to, um, the painting of Rembrandt, and I was just like, Lord, like, I want to be like that. Like, I want to be an amazing painter. Um, but he's showing us like different beautiful gifts and just uh, in the discovering of his great love for us. I, yes. <laughs> That's neat. And so you both say something about creating beauty. That's so beautiful. And I think that's part of the feminine genius, right? That we look for that. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty, yeah. 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 That's great. Okay. So I'm watching my stopwatch and we're just about done. Um, wow. So I just want to, yeah, I know it goes fast, right? So we just, we just have to do this longer next time, but um, I just want to encourage everyone who's watching the interview today to go ahead and ask you guys questions. I know both of you would love to answer them. And um, I just really am so thankful that you were here and willing to share your story. And I hope you both come back and our mentors. <laughs> <laughs> to come back to Given. <laughs> and um, so thank you so much for being here tonight and for your patience with our tech and calling in so many times. So thank you guys. You are a gift to us and you're in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.